not going back I'm moving ahead I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you well, things are made new surrendered my life to Christ I'm moving moving forward Amen. but in spite of what the enemy says God is for you I need to give you a few points of understanding, a few points before we go forward. Things to remember when under enemy attack. Things to remember when under enemy attack. Number one, God is not blind nor deaf. First thing you need to remember, God is not blind nor deaf. He knows what we're going through. Amen? Amen. Sometimes the enemy sends things to challenge your faith. Remember, the Lord allows the enemy sometimes to attack us. He said he won't put no more than we can bear. After Jesus was baptized in the pool by uh, uh, in, 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 in the pool with John the Baptist, Jesus immediately rose and the scripture said he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted yeah. of the devil. Uh -huh. He was led to be tempted. So sometimes God is going to allow us to go through some tests because the tests are character builders. Amen? Yeah. And it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, I believe it's 3, 10 or 11, he said that God gives us travail to be exercised in it. He gives us trouble so that we can grow stronger in life. God needs to separate the weak from the tear, the strong from the weak. Because he wants to use the strong to lead the weak. Amen? Amen. And the only way sometimes you're going to find out who to is by allowing us to be tested or tempted. Amen? Amen? Amen. So remember, God is not blind or deaf. He knows what we're going through. But somehow he's allowing these things. So this is what we have to understand. Don't allow the enemy. God doesn't hear you. God ain't hearing you. Sometimes I feel the Lord ain't hearing me. He goes, Lord, I feel that way too. The devil's lying. Amen. Amen. That's not even my option in my thoughts that God is not hearing me. He's hearing me. Amen. Might be ignoring me for the moment, but he's hearing me. Amen. 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 He hears me. Amen. 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 He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Period. I stand on what he said, not the thoughts of my neighbors. And this is what you have to understand. God is not blind nor deaf. He knows what we're going through. Number two, it gives God no pleasure to see us punished. Amen. It gives God no pleasure to see us punished. You ever heard your parents say it's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you? And you really mean that. I mean, literally, it would break my heart to have to beat Jay. It would really break my heart, but I'll do it if I have to do it. Amen? I'll do it if I have to do it. If I have to be there, that means she's getting to a point where if I don't stop her now, she's going to go too far to the left. Amen. Amen. I see that talking does not affect her any longer. So now I have to up the ante in order to get her back to where she needs to be. Amen. Amen. Well, that's how God is with some of us. Some of us, a lot of times, keep doing what we're doing and ignoring him like he's not talking to us. <laughs> so what has to happen? Them that know to do right, to him that which is sin, and they shall be whipped with what? Many stripes. That's his word. Because what he's saying, I'm talking to you, you're not listening. So that shows a lack of respect. Now one thing you have to understand, if God doesn't hate anything else, he hates disrespect. Amen. He hates to be disrespected. He hates to be taken for granted. Amen? Point number three. For every soul that God loses, it is a soul that the devil wins. So what does that mean? He doesn't plan on losing any souls. Amen? God is not trying to give the devil the victory over you. And God's desire is never for you to give the devil victory. Amen? For every soul that God loses, it's a soul that the devil wins. Number four. Hasty deliverance sometimes repeat. Sometimes, excuse me, hasty deliverance sometimes produces repeat offenders. Did you get what I just said? Sometimes we say, well, God doesn't hear me. Yes, he does. He hears you. But if he delivers you too fast, you're the type of person, oh, well, I got out that quick. Let me go jump back in. It wasn't that hard to get out, so I'm going to get right back in. We realize we're the type of, some people are the type of people, it, got to, it has to cost us in order for us to stop doing it. Any of y'all know that you were that person at one time in your life? If it ain't cost me, I ain't quit. <laughs> it's like gambling. You will keep gambling until you lose. That's it. You can put up your rent money, your house money, anything. You just keep on gambling. Until finally one day you lose something you can't afford to lose. Amen. Number five. 
God has never dealt with us according to our sins. Never dealt with us according to our sins. Number six, he knows that we are not a perfect people. Sometimes we, we, we think about God and we act like he doesn't know us. He knows that we're not a perfect people. He knows we're created from dust. And number seven, no matter what we are going through, we must always remember that God's love for us will never fail. No matter what we're going through, we must always remember that God's love for us will never fail. Amen? Amen. Can I judge God's love according to Harold or Harriet? Just because they were ignorant and stupid and didn't appreciate you does not mean God does not. Amen? Because they did not recognize your worth or your value, it does not mean that God does not recognize your worth or your value. Psalms 103, verses 8 through 14. Psalms 103, verses 8 through 14. Amen. Scripture reads as thus, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that what? As far as the east is from the west, so far have he removed our transgressions from us. This part is what I love. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he know our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Amen. Amen. See, all you have to do is understand the scripture to understand God. You have to understand him. First of all, he's our father. And any real father that's a true father pities their children. It breaks their heart to have to beat their children. A father would rather have you run to him and jump in his arms and hold him and kiss him and tell him you missed him. Amen. You, 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 how many of y'all had that good relationship with your fathers? We used to go run and dive on him and couldn't wait for him to get home. Amen. My daughters was coming to the house, coming to the house, 6 o'clock every day. They couldn't tell time. But they knew when that big hand was on the, on the 12 and that little hand was on the 6. When they were both straight up and down, they knew daddy was coming through the door. And they could count on that. And they came charging to the door. And that was the greatest joy in the world, to watch them charge to that door. Knowing that because they were expecting me to be there, I made it my business to be. Amen? Well, guess what? Some of us have to understand that when it comes to a relationship with God, when it comes to prayer. If we tell God, I'll be here at this time, guess what? Our Father's going to be there waiting on us with expectancy because he longs to have that relationship with us. Because he recognizes it's not just time uh, that people are passing, but this is, an, this is a relationship that's being established. That's why if you say, God, I'm going to meet you at 5 o'clock, be there at 5. If you say, God, I'm going to be in prayer from 7 to 7.30 on Wednesday, be in prayer. If you're going to be in prayer on Sunday mornings from 11.15 to 11.30, be in prayer. Amen. 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 That shows him that you love him and that you respect him and that you want to do right by him. You don't fit him in your schedule. You recognize he's daddy. Amen. Amen. He's daddy. Too many of us try to uh, uh, have a relationship with God like we have a relationship with our children. So many of them, I, I, I watched it and I've seen it. You know, little kids dictating what they're going to eat every night. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't want that. I eat that. My mother tell you, you eat it before they eat you. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't dare tell my mother what we want to go eat. <laughs> what you pay for? <laughs> my stepfather just looked at me and said, what? Oh, he'll take the plate and dump it in the garbage. Get up and go to bed. That was the end of that story. Anytime you ever tell him what you didn't want, he said, you don't want that? Nah. We thinking, okay, well, he going to switch over to what we want. He pick up the plate, dump it in the garbage, say go to bed. <laughs> tell you quick. He said, you ain't gonna waste my time to pick money. I work too hard for my money. But our problem is we spoil our children today. Yeah. And we make them think that they deserve something. Yeah, they they don't think about it, right? You have many of our kids, most of us live in what? Middle class neighborhoods, right? Okay, well, let me ask you something. 
Gucci, Fendi, Prada, Moschino, all of these people, these are what fashions? These are high class fashions. So what does that mean? If we all wear them, we live living above our means. Da da. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to truth. <laughs> You're living above your means. You're a great pretender. Yeah. We're pretending. Trying to make people think. That's why, listen, if I look at you and you came to me and I'm sitting here as a boss getting ready to hire you for a job, I'm going to look at you from head to toe. And then I'm going to look and if I start seeing a bunch of designer labels on you, you don't need no job. You already made it. Have a nice day. <laughs> But what you're saying is you already made it. So let me find somebody who looks like they need a job and give them one. Am I making sense? I don't mean a harm. If you got money to give away an extra couple of hundred for a piece of $5 cloth, you don't need a job. You already made it. We don't tell you a job number. <laughs> it's AQ 36. Hey, man, I'm telling you, though, but one thing I tell people, stop pretending. I pretend I'm trying to be anything that I am. I look at people in a minute and say, yo, man, why don't you get money? I can't afford that. You don't need me playing. I don't play rich. I don't play rich. I'm walking in the spirit. But in the natural, I'm still stacking. Amen. One day I'll get there, but I ain't there yet. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 36. Amen. Point of understanding. In spite of who we are, we still have favor with God. Amen. Amen. Say that we have it. Yes. Say wait if you don't. Also thou, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains. Look at him. Now watch what he's doing. He said, also son of man, prophesy unto what? Yes. It's going to make sense in a minute. And say ye mountains, if you hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, because the enemy have said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. And you are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and to the valleys and to the desert waste and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all the Adonia, Adonia, which have appointed my land into their possessions with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because you have borne the shame of the heathen, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. What's going on here? Israel's in a place where the surrounding nations are laughing at it. And it's starting to tip Israel's father off. Have you ever thought about it being a father? You send your children outside and you look at the other kids, tease them, oh, look at you, you ain't got no clothes, your clothes are raggedy. Look at this and look at that. How does it make you feel as a parent? Somebody laughing at your children and putting your children down. And even though you may have sent your child outside and told them, no, you're not going to get any new clothes because you were bad in school. That's why you're still wearing the same jeans for three days because I told you I'm not going to buy you anything new because of your behavior. But yet, once the father hears that someone is taunting and teasing his children and trying to break their esteem and tear them down and making them feel bad, doesn't it, as a parent, give you a desire to avenge them? Yes. Ooh, well, they don't mess around and take Israel daddy off. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. you don't want to make him mad. Yeah. 
Amen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, verse 7, God, I have lifted up my hands. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. He said, okay, now they're laughing. Same thing, make you laugh, don't make you cry. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For they are had to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply men upon you. What did God tell the prophet to do? Speak to that mountain, to that dead thing. The valley was dead, the mountains were dead. Anything that could produce, the enemy had saw to it that it could not produce any longer. But God said, listen, I'm sick of your enemies laughing at you. Now I tell you, speak to that thing. I give you as man, you as my men and women servants, I give you power to speak to every desolate thing in your life, to speak to every broken thing in your life, to speak to every downtrodden thing in your life. I anoint you to speak is what God is saying. Amen. He didn't say, I'm going to speak to him. He said, just tell him what I said. So what is God saying? When we take the word of God, no matter where the scripture is, if it is a promise from God, you take that scripture and you use it Amen. to God's glory. Right. It glorifies God to see our faith. It glorifies God to see us walk into a room where there's nothing and say, you know what? This is going to be a blessed place. Amen. This is a wealthy place. This is a God desired and a God-given place. This is a place where we're going to be blessed. We are blessed and we shall be blessed. Where our seed shall be blessed from generation to generation. Why? Because I said so. Amen. He said, listen, if we are the seed of Abraham, our family shall be blessed eternally because of Abraham. Amen. Well, do we have the faith of Abraham? Yes. Do we believe in Abraham? Yes. Do we believe in the God of Abraham? Yes. And guess what? Because we believe, we receive Amen. Amen. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you. And ye shall be tilled and sown. I will multiply men upon you. And this is the next thing that we need to pray. God, multiply the men of your house. And I will multiply men. They weren't there before. They weren't there to do the work. He said, now watch this. God is infinite in his wisdom. He said, as I begin to prophesy to the mountains and tell the trees to grow again, bear fruit again and, 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 and to the harvest to, to grow again and the crops to grow again, guess what? they still be worthless to you if you don't have anyone to till them. God is infinite with us said, don't just bless me, but give me someone to harvest the blessing. Give me somebody to keep the blessing. I don't think that Lord just bless me. Lord just bless me. Give me all this stuff. God gives us all this stuff. We're in a studio apartment. <laughs> Now we need a three-bedroom apartment just to hold the blessing. I got you. Mm -mm, a prepared place for prepared people. Amen. Amen. He said, I'll multiply men unto you all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be built. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit, fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. Jesus. Huh? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I touch and agree with that. In Jesus' name. I touch and agree with that. Amen. 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 He said, I'll do, and I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Now watch this. God is saying all of this, but then watch who he's talking to. Wait till he tells us who we talk to. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you. Watch this. I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee. And thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, Thou land devourest up men, and hast bereaved thy nations. Therefore thou shalt devour men no more, neither breathe thy nation here or say it be the shame of the heathen anymore. What he said, I'm gonna shut the mouth of them that speak bad about you. Neither shalt thou bear the reproach of the people anymore, neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall anymore, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their land, they what? 
defiled it by their own way and their own doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a woman removed. Exactly. <laughs> Wherefore, I poured my fury. Now, are you understanding how serious God takes things? That statement alone makes it real serious. It makes it very, very serious. To any man who has God's spirit, that's how he feels about that yuck. Amen. Amen. And that's what God was saying. The, the nation of Israel made him feel yuck. <laughs> Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for the idols wherein they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone out of his land. But I had pity. Why? For my holy name which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, wherever you, where, where you went. He said, and I will sanctify, what? I always try to tell you all, my job is to teach you how to sanctify God. Amen. The reason why I don't lay hands on people all the time, because I don't want you to think that the only way you can be healed is if I touch you. Jesus. Power belongs to God. Amen. All you have to do is lift your hands up to heaven and tell him, I know who you are. That's right. I know what you can do. I know the power that lives in you. All I need is a touch from you, God. Jesus. If you would learn to glorify him, what many men do, this is what I'm telling you. Ah, yeah, ah, roll around on the ground. Ah, ah. And then get up and push people out. I ain't knocking nobody out. Amen? We have to get to the point where we understand something. We must sanctify God as holy. Amen. Somebody has to believe I stood in the middle of the church one day and I came believing that God was going to heal me. I came believing that God was going to heal me. Not that man was going to heal me, that God was going to heal me. And when I did it, I just lifted my hands and said, Lord, I believe you. In spite of what the doctor says, in spite of what people say, in spite of what all of them that have been sick before me with this same disease said, that it's incurable. I know a God who can fix desolate things. And he doesn't do it because of who I am. But he does it for his name's sake. If I would just learn to sanctify him. That's it. That's all I try to teach people. Let me tell you something. When you find people that love to preach and jump and, and shout and fall and pray for 99 hours in front of people, the same people won't pray for nine seconds alone. Why, how do you know that? Scripture. Matthew, is it 25 or 23? When he said they love praying in front of people, but they won't pray at home. Amen. But well, watch this, verse 23. And I will sanctify my great name. He said, I'll sanctify it, being that you didn't do it. I'll sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know what? Now, it's our job to make sure that people know how big, how awesome, how great, and how glorious our God is. Amen. That's our job. But God said, in case you don't want to do it, I can do it myself. He said, listen, I can give you three numbers that will make you sanctify me. He said, you want them numbers? 911. 9-11. He said, I had the whole nation praying. Amen. The whole world praying. I had white boys and black boys hugging each other and singing Kumbaya together. That's it. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Meaning, come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Oh, they all were singing, whether they had badges of gun or not. 
God said, listen, I will make you sanctify my name. You don't have to worry about that, baby. I'm asking y'all to do it the easy way. Because on any given day, I could just sit a crap down the middle of God through a boulevard, split the ground open, and watch cars fly in it. And I guarantee you, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that I'm Lord. Oh, you will sanctify me in your heart if I want you to. But I give every man the opportunity to bless me from his soul. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not a rapist. I'm not a seducer. I don't want to abuse you to get your love. Amen. I'd rather you love me because you recognize that I'm good to you. Amen. But watch this. He said, I'll sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which we have profaned in the midst of them. The heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. He said, I want to be sanctified in you. I want to get down in the city of your soul and you walk around bragging about me. You walk around telling people how good, how great, how merciful, how loved I am. You mess around and make me heal you so I can have you run around and tell everybody my God is a healer. You mess around and get broke so I can financially bless you so you can run around telling people I am Jehovah Jireh. You mess around. Amen. Forget where you live and I'll be Jehovah Rophi, your Lord, your battle so that people will know where I stand. You mess around and lose your mind so I can be Jehovah Sophie and give you back your wisdom, bring you back stronger mentally than you ever been before. You mess around and give me the opportunity to prove who I am in your life. If you don't keep telling me how big your problems are, tell your problems how big I am. That's all God wants you to do. Tell your problems how big I am. Step on that report. That's it. Step on that report. Devil, you under my foot. You a liar. Amen. What God says, I am what God says I am. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going out and blessed coming in. Head and not the tail, lend and not the bar, above and not beneath. Hallelujah. Now listen. Now go ask Eve how you like them apples. Okay, man. Watch this. He said, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Amen. Now, wait a minute. He's talking to a people that violated him. Mm -hmm. But guess what? That's how strong his love is. If we can ever understand that his love is so much stronger than his wrath, mm -hmm. so much stronger. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put in you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments, what? <laughs> All because I commanded it to be so. Amen. Are you getting it? Yes. Too many of us rely on our own strength. Too many of us rely on our own strength. And then because we rely on our own strength and it's not working, we believe God can't do it. I pray and then I go to sleep. Amen. What does that mean? Lord, you said you were creating me a clean heart. Mm -hmm. You would wash my heart. Mm -hmm. You would create in me a right spirit. You would do the work. I can't fix me. Matter of fact, I don't even want to try. All I want to do is sanctify you in my heart. Yes. Lord, I know I'm nothing special. I know there's no good in me. I know there's nothing right or righteous about me. I made righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. But I know the God of my heart is so awesome, so mighty, so marvelous, so perfect, so wonderful, so loving, so kind, so faithful that there's nothing that I can ask him, nothing that I can think about, nothing that I can need, nothing that I can want, nothing that I can desire, nothing that I can believe him for that he will not give me just because of who he is, just because he is a good God and he is my father. Lord God, man, listen. 
I get so high on you. I get high on God. I'm going to tell you something. Old folks used to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I would say, shut up. Why all y'all say the same thing? I didn't say that to them. Don't say my hand, shut up. Why all y'all say the same thing? They used to have another saying, you understand it better by and by. Amen. <laughs> Amen. When you're young, you're dumb. You think you know everything, amen? But Lord, as I got older, I just want to get on the back of the line with the saints and shout with a 31 white outfits. Amen. Don't be roll with the saints. Don't march in any. Huh? They used to sing that song, and we didn't understand what it meant. But Lord God, don't we want to be the saints marching in? Amen? I'm going to tell you something. It makes a difference when you know your God. They had a relationship with Jesus. They had a friendship with Jesus. They had a fellowship with Jesus. They didn't do church. They did Jesus. Amen? We were doing church while they were doing Jesus. They were shouting and dancing and praising because they know the victories that God had given them. Jesus. Listen. They had victory because they knew they couldn't do it in their own strength. Right. Some of them said, I was an alcoholic for years. I was on drugs for years. I was in abusive marriage for years. I was abandoned for years. I was dead. I mean, they had some testimony far greater than ours. I used to be a prostitute. I used to be this. And when you look at it, you would never get out of here. Amen. God had, what he said, I, I sprinkle you clean. God has sprinkled them so clean that you wouldn't even believe what they used to be. You couldn't tell what God had done for them. Our God is such an awesome God. Somebody ought to give an awesome praise up in here. Somebody ought to bless his holy name. Tell him how wonderful he is. You know, God, I thank you that I don't look like what I did do. I thank you that I don't look like what my experience was. I thank you, Father God. The Lord God, you brought me out with something that I never thought I'd be good for. Lord God, I give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We shout to the Lord. Hallelujah, O God. We shout to the Lord. When you are worthy of the praise of God, we give you our thanks this morning. God, we glorify you. Hallelujah. I don't look like what I've been through. You got to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, as many times as you've seen me, you still don't really know me. That way, they ought to get you a praise. They ought to get you a praise. Baby, you see me just up. the dressed up part, but it's the blessed up part. It's the part that God blessed. Thank you to know the heart mess before he blessed me. Woo! You know me like you just did. I was a hot mess before the good hand of the Lord touched me. I was a hot mess before the Lord spoke a word in my life. I was a desolate place. I was a broken down God. I was a family Lord. Oh, I saw the Lord. He looked at me. Oh, you were in his place. To the temple. Oh, God, we thank you. Y'all are 
give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments. This is what God is going to do. He's going to make us do it. He said that you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I'll be your God. And I will also save you. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. God say, hey, I recognize what's in you. But I'm going to save you from you. My God, he got up by so short almost sometimes. He got up by so Hallelujah. He comes to speak to the broken this morning. Amen. So to the struggling this morning, just ask me and I'll do it. Mm, I stand at the door and knock. Hallelujah. If you will open up, I'll come in. He said, and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that you shall receive no more reproach or famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your old evil ways, your own evil ways, and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. What he's saying, when I put that right spirit in you, you're going to look back at yourself and say, my God, I can't stand that person. Yeah. Mm. God ever did that to y'all? When you look back, ooh, I couldn't stand them. Never wanted to be them ever again in life. Lord, please, for your sake, for the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of all that's right and holy, please don't let me go back that way. That's how you know when you have a right relationship with God. Because you don't want to go back. You don't want to go back. The devil might remind you of where you've been. Amen. And try to make it sound very tempting. But something on the inside, he said, listen, I don't mean no harm. I ain't going back. I ain't leave nothing back there. Jesus. Verse 31, then shall you remember your old evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourself in your own sight for your iniquities, for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own I shall have house of cleansed you from all of your iniquities. I will also cause you to dwell in cities and the waste shall be builded. Jesus. And the desolate land shall be tilled. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. Jesus. Come on now. God said, I'm going to make it beautiful for you. Yes. I'm going to take you from broken and battered to blessed and beautiful. Yes. He said, be like the garden of Eden. And the waste and the desolate ruined cities are become fenced and uninhabited. Then the heathen that are left around about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that was desolate. And I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord, God, I will yet for this be inquired of thee by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem, and her solemn feasts, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And I'm going to decree something over this house. This house shall be filled with flocks of men. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree it and declare it. It shall be filled with holy men, sanctified men, wise and godly, humble-hearted men, worshipers of the true and living God, we touch and agree, God shall shed and bless them. Men who will bless this house and be a blessing to the women of God of this house, who will be a blessing to their families. We decree it and declare it. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. But I, 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 I want you to focus on the bottom line of verse 36. It said, the Lord said, I have, 
I, the Lord, have spoken it, and what? I will do it. I need y'all to go put in your prayer exactly what he said in here. Lord, you'll create in me a clean heart. You'll take the uncleanness from me. You'll renew my land. You'll bless the desolate place in my life. And Lord, do it for me. Amen. I wait on you to do it. It's already done. Let me tell you something. When you seal a prayer with I touch and agree that it's already done. In Jesus' name, guess what? God do it. Because you believe him. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet.